just a wonderful scripture today that we have been led to, and it challenges us around what we think our faith is and how we enact and believe in our faith that has been given to us. And so just this morning, I want to walk us through this chapter of Romans and ask us as we walk through this selection of scripture that open your minds to what it is you think God is saying as we talk about faith. Because faith requires us to believe and to trust. But what does that mean to have faith? You know, we say that. Some people just say it off the cuff. You know, you just got to have faith. You just got to believe. But we, what does that really mean to have faith? What does it mean to have blind faith in what God said? You know, God says some things and it's interpreted through our lens of what we think faith is. But faith is to be boldly confident. And faith requires us to, to just latch on to God, what God said, and believe it without question. And how do we begin to develop that unquestionable faith without fault or faith without uh, questioning? Faith that says, you've got a stronghold and God's got a stronghold on you. And by faith, you're going to go through. Faith uh, requires us to have an attitude of receptiveness. We have to, there's a couple of things that faith requires us to have. An attitude that we'll receive what God said and that we'll have the right position toward God and that we have God giving us power and we're willing to receive that power. See, God can, can say you can do all things. You can, we, we say that. We, we, we uh, repeat the scripture. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. How many of us have the faith to actually take that walk? I believe that Christ said it. I believe that it's in the word of God. And I believe that I can do anything God said through Christ Jesus. That takes a lot of trust. That takes an attitude that I will indeed receive every word that God said. But then, he didn't just leave it for us to have our own interpretation. See, we know God's word is a road map, right? And so when our faith begins to falter, we just go back in his word and find another definition, another pathway out. And what does he say in Hebrews 11 chapter and 6 verse, he says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently serve him. So there is a pathway that God has given us, even in his word, even when we start having a little doubt, even when we start leaning to the left or leaning to the right. God will send his word to shore us up on either side. I always like to use uh, uh, symbolism and, and, and things and other words and, and, and things that I can do to bring God's word to life because grace and mercy escort us through God's word and shore us up. And so when I feel a little bit of leaning to the side, I call on grace to take me to the next side. And grace helps me stand up straight. And then when I start leaning to the right, I call on God for mercy and he helps me stand back up straight. So grace and mercy are escorting me through the pathways and the challenges that God is, is allowing me to traverse through. Because God is the one that allows us to get on a pathway and to get out. Because if we trust him, if we believe him, if we have faith in him, we know that we're going to come out on the other side. Well, how do we know that we can trust? If we go back over our life and we just look at situations that we found ourselves in and then we 
Just think about where we are in that moment that we're not in those situations. It was the trust in God. It was believing by faith because this scripture says there's nothing we can do. My works are not rewarded, but my righteousness is. And we can only be righteous because God says we're righteous. We can't be righteous on our own. We're not capable of getting ourselves out of sin. If that were the case, there would have been no need for God to send his only son here to walk this, this pathway and be nailed to the cross and get up and let uh, uh, Satan know, uh, you don't have any power. I've come to, to re, uh, redeem my brothers and sisters, my children. And it's my blood that has redeemed those who call and accept me as their elder brother in their pathway. And so if that hadn't happened, we would not be redeemed. So it's only God and his grace and through his son that we have been redeemed. And so we know we can't do it on our, on our own. In Psalms, 39 times David shows us about his trust. Even though David was, you know, I'll just say a wild guy. David was David. David did what David did. He was really busy doing his thing. But he trusted and he believed and he honored God and he asked for forgiveness. And he wrote all of these songs that praise God, but they also show us that if we ask God to forgive us, he knows who we are. And he'll come down from his throne and he'll pick us up and put us back on the pathway and give us yet another chance. You know, we always uh, uh, say, some of us will say, I just need one more chance now. I've learned not to say one more. Just can I have another chance? Because in my humanness, in my flesh, one more is not going to be enough. Because, you know, it's the thoughts, not always the deeds. It's the thoughts as well as the deeds that get us into sin situations. And so it's only God who can forgive those sins and give us yet another chance. And so when David is reminding us in 39, 39 times, and I can only imagine have, having read over the life of David, that 39 was a low number. Those are the ones he wrote about. We don't know about all of the other private ones that he spoke to God in the midst of what he was doing. We can't even count the number of times, some of us, that we've had those, those confessions to God. You know, a thought comes across our mind, we know it was out of order, we ask God's forgiveness and we move on. We apologize, we get up, we do something different. <coughs> But it's because God, because of our faith, because of our trust, because we believe. And what is it to believe? What does that mean? I believe God will do it. It means I have confidence. I have overwhelming confidence that the God that I serve will give me yet another opportunity that he won't leave me in the mist and the muck and mire of my decisions, but I, I am absolutely sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can have confidence in the God who created me, who is waiting for me when I cross over into the other side of eternity to welcome me with open arms. But then I had someone question me, how, how do you know that? You know, you tell me about your belief. You tell me about your faith. How do you know? Well, to know something means that you understand that it's your fact and your truth. And my fact and my truth is that I know when I look back over my life that it was only God. That's my fact and my truth. And I remember my dad telling my husband before we got married, uh, don't marry her if you don't believe and trust God because you will never be able to convince her that the God that she serves is anything but her Lord and Savior. That Jesus is indeed the head of her life. And she's not getting ready to leave for you, me, or anybody else. 
because I look back over my life and I knew that I should have been dead when I was five when they, they said all is, all is lost and we don't know what's going on and we can't figure that out. I knew that when I looked over my life and I had a, a major accident and the doctor came in and announced that I would never walk again and God told me in that very moment that's not my story. So when you look back over your life and you see some catastrophe, you see some moment of grief that has kind of ripped out your, your heart and your soul and you just want to throw in the towel and give up because that person who got called it back to heaven was so close and intertwined in your life that, that you didn't think you could make another day, but God picked you up and God sent comforters and he sent people into your life to cheer you on and say, you know, this too will pass. This too you'll be able to get by. Because I will not leave you in this situation. Blind trust, blind faith, confidence, knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has given you everything that you need. But how do you know who to trust on this earth? Well, God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge me, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So if you have a relationship, if you have a friendship, if you have something that you feel like you're supposed to do, you got to take that to God. And you've got to have your spiritual ear open for directions because you have to lean not on your understanding because we are emotional beings. We, we, we you know, I like you and I, I think we ought to do something together. But did I ask God if you're the one I'm supposed to go into business with? I went into business with somebody. I was leaning on my own understanding and what I thought I knew about this individual and we went into business. And five years down the road, that person did what they did, and we went out of business. And that person left me hanging with all the debt of the business, because I didn't lean on God. But God didn't leave me in that situation. He opened another door for me to resolve those business issues and to continue on with my business and be successful. Because I learned in that that, that situation, that when I lean on my understanding, when I make emotional decisions without checking with God, that they usually end up kind of disastrous. And so that's what happens. That's when we find ourselves falling off the so-called wagon and, you know, the, the back of the potato truck, as my grandma used to say, you fell off the potato truck and hit your head because you didn't check in. Who told you to do that? Well, the word of God gives us a pathway out. All we have to do is meditate on his word day and night. Take it to him. Lay it at his feet. Ask him to make a, help me make a decision. Tell me what should I do in this situation. But it takes that faith walk. Because it's only by faith. It's only by our trust. It's only by our confidence. It's only by our belief. It's only by blind trust. It's only by knowing that we serve a God who's never, ever left us nor forsaken us. And then when we read his encouragement in the midst of making decisions, we know that the decisions that we make are going to lead us to victorious endings. God gives us that roadmap as we walk through this life. And that's what he, when, when he gave us this, this scripture this morning that we're looking at that we can see it in Abraham's. He said, don't worry about what Abraham did, what that was good. That's not what I'm looking at. God is not looking at us to be do-gooders. We can do all the good. You know, there are people today who go around and say, you know, Jane has been a wonderful person her whole life. She has helped the homeless and she's fed them and she's gone out and taken coats and everything else, and she has lifted people up. 
But you know that, that she doesn't know the Lord. That she hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And God says, you have to come by to him through his son. And so no matter how much good work we do, we need to encourage those who, who pour themselves out to make sure that they know Christ. Make sure that they have accepted him so that when we all cross over, we'll meet again in heaven. Because that's the access. Jesus is the access. You know, you got to have a, a, the key to open the lock. And Jesus is the key. And so when Abraham, who trusted, believed, had full confidence in God, who, who, who threw everything in, but he also did good works. And the scripture compares good works like going to a job. After I worked my 80 hours in a pay period, I expect to get a check. But that has nothing to do with my faith in Christ. That has nothing to do with my ministry, necessarily. Because some of us are placed on our jobs, the jobs that we have or had, because we are there to minister to those who are going to cross our path. And so even in the professions that we have, that could be our purpose that God designed us for. You know, I often ask God, why do I have to work at this place? Why is it that I have to work with this group of people? Because it's okay to ask God and question God. Because you want to know why you have to keep showing up. He said, trust in me. And don't lean on my own understanding. So I get up and go to work every day. And what I have found is there are people on my job who don't know Christ or don't know him well. And even though we work in an environment that says, well, you know, you don't talk about religion well, if somebody asks me about it, they just open the door and I'm just answering questions. And so, you know, I beg people. Because I think, you know, sometimes you have to bait people into asking you about how you're getting over and what you're going through. Because they might see your story, see you going through things on the outside, and they don't know how you're surviving on the inside. And so all you have to do is ask me, how do you still come to work and you just lost your sister, you just lost your mom, you just lost your brother? You, you, you go into the hospital and you're doing all these funerals. How do you keep standing up? Well, you know now that you ask. Let me tell you how that works. See, I serve a God who had, didn't let me go by myself. He didn't let me go through it by myself. When my sister was, was, was going through her, her diagnosis and treatment and she was getting worse and not better, and I asked God, what's the point here? Why are you, you already took mom, you already took dad, you're taking my, you're taking my brother, now you're going to take my sister now. What else did you have in mind? Because you know I can't take this guy. And he said, I know you can, that's why I'm with you. So just keep showing up. You're showing up to let, let the, these loved ones know that you're still there for them and that I'm waiting for them. You're there to encourage them through the pain and the process. You're there to comfort them. You're there to minister to them. I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. See, because every time we go check in with God, he'll tell us why we're showing up in places we don't want to be. He'll strengthen us for the journey. And all he asks us to do is trust in him, to have faith in him. And he is the rewarder of our faith. And that's what he's talking about here. He is the one who declares that we are righteous because we had faith in him, that we trusted in him, and that we put all the things and all of our concerns in his hands and said, God, I can't do it. I need you to do it. I need you to help me do it. I need you to pick me up off the ground because really that's where I am today. In my own self, I'm not able to overcome this. And so the word of God says, he'll not give you more than you can bear. And I'm like, well, I, uh, okay, I'm at my, my wit's end here. I, I'm just looking for you, God. It's okay to talk to God like that. He already knew you were at your wit's end. 
He was just he was just waiting on you to cry out. Because sometimes we want to carry that burden ourselves, you know, as demonstration in my clinical work when I have people who are burdened down and going through something and, and carrying all the, the, the guilt and shame, I have them pick up a, a piece of furniture and walk around with it. And I ask them, is that heavy? And if they say no, I add things onto that piece of furniture and say, is it heavy yet? And if they say no, I add some more stuff onto that. And when it gets too heavy, I ask them, and when were you going to put that down? See, that's how we do with our lives and our burdens. We, we feel like we can carry them. We put them on our back. We carry them in our arms. And, and the burdens of this world keep piling on and piling on until we're down on the ground and, and we're on our knees and we can't pick ourselves up. And then all of a sudden it comes to us, oh, all I had to do was ask the God I serve and he can pick me up. I'm just here to encourage myself and you all are getting to listen in on the conversation I'm having with this mirror in front of me because that's how it works. When you feel like that, you can't go on. You can't pick up another foot, foot and go down another step further. When, you, when, when the doctor delivers you some bad news, uh, uh, when you've got to go someplace that you don't want to go, lean not on your own understanding. Ask God and he'll give you the answer. He'll give you the way out of no way. He'll give you the equipment, the people, and, and the encouragement. He'll give you peace. And guess what? You'll know you have your answer because what happens is you find yourself in a whole cloud of peace. You know, it's just like this pilot who was in the cloud and he was sweating and he was anxious and he didn't know if he was upside down or right side up, but he decided to, to depend on the instrument and our instrument is the word of God. What did he say? He said, I've got you. He said, I will be with you always. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if we believe him, if we have trust in him, if we know beyond the shadow of a doubt, he's already brought us this far and he's never left us, then we can depend on the instrument of his word to lead and guide us out of what our next is. And as next shows up, you can look Satan square in his face and say, I plead the blood of Jesus against you and I already claim victory because my God said he was still with me and that he would not leave me. And so I don't know what the doctor's report is. I don't know what the teacher said when they said I wasn't going to graduate. I don't know what the pink slip meant when they told me I no longer had a job. I don't know when the bank called and said there was an overdraft and I didn't have any money coming. But what I know is I serve a God who said in any situation and in every situation, I'm with you. And I can look back over my life and trace the times that he's been with me and know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, I shouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be here today if it was not for the God I serve. And so there's nothing that can shatter that faith. I think that that as we go through life and we look at the things we've been tried and tested and gone through, that we can know that God is going to be with us. So I just came today to encourage us all to know that whatever you're facing, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will, not he might, he will direct your path. God bless you.